Okay, uh, I guess a couple of you are starting to filter in. Got a couple of people there. Uh, not sure if you can hear me good. I'm going to uh, try to switch over my mic my microphone to the correct one. I've never used this before. So, um, okay, it seems to be using the right one. So, okay, so I'm going to be uh, on, yeah, I'll be talking about this uh, during this one, uh, Bill. So, um, what I'm going to do today on this live stream tonight, I'm going to be turning a bowl uh, for what's called the what? What is it called? I can't remember. Um, it is called the, the Virtual Craft Festival that Jamie Page and Carl Jacobson are going to be putting on. And I was thinking about doing some. Can you guys hear me? Give me a thumbs up or something. Just let me know that you guys can hear me. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Um, and Jacob uh, or Carl uh, Jacobson and uh, Jamie Page put this thing on. And they asked me to participate. They had a, a dropout. And I said, yeah, sure, I, I'd do it. Uh, I was going to do some casting with that. <coughs> but I decided I'm going to turn a bowl later on tonight for that. So, hey, Tom or and whichever one it is. <laughs> Axe Wood Pace is on here. Um, but I wanted to cast something. And I have a cutoff here from a piece of uh, burl. Uh, that I made a a bowl out of, and this was the side piece. Uh, I cut the bowl out of the center portion of it, and this was on the side. So I cut this down, and I saved it. Now, why did I save it? Because look at this burl. See if you can look at that. That is just so beautiful, if you ask me. So I figured this would make a kind of a, a neat, either making a platter or... Uh, making a, uh, a platter or, <laughs> I don't know, a cutting board, a charcuterie board or something like that. So um, I thought I would go ahead and do that. So yesterday I went and I made up this form here. And if you saw, I put water into it about right up to here and I tested it so it doesn't leak because all I did was use hot glue on this. I've been having a lot of questions about what this is. This is corrugated plastic cardboard. And where do I get it? Well, you can buy it off of Amazon. You can buy it off of eBay. You can buy it off the internet. But I go to my local uh, sign making place and I ask them for any signs that they have messed up or scraps of this. And they bring me out piles of it. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely need to be watching my language. Uh, I have a, a, a good repertoire of, of foul language. That's why I like to do uh, regular videos where I can edit it out. All right, so we're going to do this. And if this doesn't take too long, we're going to cast another one. <clears throat> I had a uh, subscriber talk to me <clears throat> and make a comment about how I should use some of this... Uh, gold uh, leaf well this is the copper leaf and i want to take this copper leaf and mix it with black resin and do it up and put it in a bowl and hopefully it won't sink to the bottom so believe it or not i do get a lot of ideas from subscribers and uh i want to address something real quick somebody talked about Every one of my videos has issues that go wrong on it. Um, you have to realize I make probably eight bowls a week, um, sometimes less, sometimes even more. Uh, so I usually video the ones that I'm experimenting on or that 
I feel I'm going to have a hard time with. So that, and that's why I show it. That's why I do it. I like to experiment uh, like the, uh, the uh, American flag that I just did. Uh, I was experimenting on that and I had a lot of issues. So I'm going to redo that, that video that I just put out uh, and it'll be a talky video like, like I'm used to doing where I show you my issues and, and you can laugh at me because I, I do have some real issues. You don't see it uh, in that video because it was just me talking over a, a, a very personal story. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this done. Uh, hey, let me see what color you guys think would be best with this, this burl here. Um, I have many, many colors, including, where is it? Total Boat just sent me this kit here. It's a Total Boat tint kit. Now, these are, are opaque. They're not translucent, but there are some pretty cool colors to include a blue, although it says black. Oh, it's in German too. Okay. Uh, but it has a, uh, a mirror blue, ocean blue. It even has a silver. Uh, so we can use pretty much any color there. Or let me see if I can move this camera without knocking everything over. I have a couple here, right here. These are, are opaque ones, or the, I'm sorry, these are translucent ones. These are more opaque ones. And then over here behind my air, I have a bunch of opaque ones, which are, hold on a second, which are a bunch of the, uh, the Jacquard uh, Pearl X. Um, I even have some of these, and these are from Art and Glow, and they glow in the dark, different colors. These are neons. Those are regular colors. Uh, I just got those. Haven't even tried them yet. Probably do those in another video. Um, and then I have all these black diamond right here, which is a whole bunch of different colors. So... Let's see what you want. Oh, well, I'm sorry. And then I got a few glitters as I drop everything. I got some glitters uh, from Chromacraft. So let's see what color you guys think would go in here. And I'll let you know. Pearl Aqua. Ocean blue or translucent red are always good. I've actually done a red one. And I call it the uh, the strawberry jam platter. And it, it, it was pretty fun to make. So... Teal, blue, blue seems to be, ooh, red and gold swirl. That'd be a difficult one. I'm wondering if we can do, hey, Kevin, I tried to get a hold of you earlier, trying to get you on here, man. Um, I can't remember which way I did this. I might have made this a little bit too small. Might have to go cut this down just a hair. Hey, give me one second. I'm going to, hold on a second. Let me get you back down here so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Give me one quick second. I'm going to go shave off a hair of this so it fits in here better since I made this and it's got the glue in it. It doesn't fit in there perfectly. So I'll keep looking at the uh, comments as I do that. It'll take two seconds to cut this. See, he wasn't joking. That was pretty quick, right? <laughs> oh, okay, Kevin. All right, no problem. Uh, a lot of sand. <laughs> uh, Kevin recently uh, started using uh, some resin and, and wood and doing bowls. If you haven't been over to uh, Kevin Carpenter's YouTube channel, head on over there and check him out. He uh, He's doing some really good... Uh, bowls check them out on facebook also um he posts most of his uh his his bowls and stuff and pens and stuff like that on on youtube or i'm sorry on facebook but uh head on over and check them out all right so all right so here's how it's going to sit in here i hope um but what we're going to have to do is i should have done it i got a late start this morning leanne had to go to a uh 
a baby shower. So I got a late start. So we got to let this heat up. But we're going to do this. And let me go through here. Mm. Okay. So maybe, just maybe, what do you guys think about using some of this copper leaf in some uh, either any color? What do you guys think about that? Because I'm not sure if I want to do just a plain colored one or we could do two different colors. What do you guys think about that? Uh, we can do black and gold right here and then try to swirl them together. Either way, I'm going to have to end up doing a couple of pours. Uh, the reason I'm going to have to do a couple of pours is we are going to use <clears throat> some Total Boat Thick Set, which you can make uh, larger pours, but this is going to end up being a very, <laughs> very big pour here. Uh, so I don't believe that we can, we can just pour one big pour here. It'll end up cracking because um, I'm not going to be able to put it in a pressure pot either. So I'm going to do uh, probably a half inch pour. And then come back later and do another half inch pour. All right. What what color would you guys want to see? Uh, I do not have any of the interference colors. Sorry, Kevin. Let's see here. I've done a lot of blue. I've done a lot of red. I've got some coffee colors. Um. How about we could do a, a a purple if you guys want. This is lavender, not purple, but here's purple right here. We could do a translucent purple um, if we don't use this. What do you guys think of a translucent purple in here? Clear? Uh, <laughs> I I like clear, but it is extremely hard to get them so you don't see any scratches on it. So usually when I do a clear, I have something inside of it, uh, like the tribbles that I did the triple video and stuff like that. Black and gold, orange and blue. I'm not really sure. Aren't those Ohio colors or something? That might be kind of cool if uh, putting some clear down, this is a suggestion, putting some clear down, putting this uh, copper leaf on it, and then do another clear pour. That might be kind of cool, too. Somebody else said purple and copper. Hmm. All right. Well, let me uh, let me get a cup over here. Oh, I got I got an upcoming video right here. Here's a sneak peek at it. These glow in the dark. So this will be a kind of a neat little project. And I got these ones also, little half ones that I, I made. So let me get a ball of two. All right. So purple and teal. See, everybody wants two colors. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. You know, um, what is that? Zargash or Zergash? I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Um, has a point. This is a lighter wood. Maybe a darker color in here might might do something. You know, you got the darker. It's a purple or even a darker blue. Let's see if I can find the darker blue. I have brown. Uh, just looking. I got a little. Most of my colors are very vibrant. Not very many people like the darker colors. Um, there's a forest green, but that's not, that's going to be an opaque. That's the uh, Lumilite uh, colors right there, dye. Now, you have different kinds. If you saw my video recently that I just posted the other day, um, I used this stuff right here from Stick Fast. All right. Um, I gotta, I gotta warn you guys about this stuff real quick. 
Uh, if you were watching the video, you saw me using a, an Arbortech grinder on the bowl. This stuff right here makes your resin so incredibly hard. It's unbelievable. So <laughs> be, be, be very careful when using the, the, the dyes from stick fast. Okay. I'm not downing them. It just, it makes it the resin very hard and I had to grind it out because I couldn't get a good cut on it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and we are going to use uh, a translucent blue for it, okay? That seems to be uh, the most I've seen in here, a blue. Maybe a blue and next person that posts another color, we're going to do a blue and whatever else color that somebody puts up here, the next one up there. And we're waiting. See, it takes a little bit. But either way, I'm going to start doing this right here. We're going to uh, we're going to pour out 500 grams right here of total boat. And what I do is I put the cup on there, and then I hit zero out so you don't weigh the cup. All right, 500 grams there. Damn you, JP, you and your orange. All right, orange and per blue. That's going to be a really ugly color, I think. Let's see if I can find some orange. I want some uh, orange, orange. There's lemon. All right. Let me see. Okay, I gotta find some some orange over here. Um, I think Aztec orange would be nice if I can find any. Or Aztec gold. All right, we may be out of out of issues with that. So let's do blue and white. Sound good? That's limestone colors. That's limestone University, right down the road from me. You buy what from me? <laughs> All right. Um, I can't find uh, a, a good orange to go in here. Let me keep looking. Orange. Okay, I've got an orange right here, but I got to shake it up. And it takes a bit to shake this stuff up. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, now that it's a uh, this is brand new, so <laughs> all right. Well, you wanted orange, so I found an orange for you right there. Okay, I'm gonna have to pierce it somehow. It's uh somewhere, I don't know. So, give me a second, I gotta find something to pierce this with. Since it's, I've never used orange, because orange is Clemson colors, and whew, I'm not sure anybody be caught dead saying they like Clemson or Ohio State. <laughs> All right, so let's do the blue one here. Uh, yeah, let's hold off on it. Let's uh. Let's do this orange one. Let's pop it because we're going to have to make both of these. Mix them both up. All right. That should be good now. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure how to do that. I just started using this, uh, this uh, steam yard. So, all right. So, now that I've got 500 grams of this done up, uh, what it is, is this is a three to one mixture, but it's not 33, it's 28. So 28 times five equals 140 more grams 
of uh, resin, or I'm sorry, and hardener in here. So I think my math is right. Probably should have used a bigger thing here. All right, so we're going to put that right there. And what's great about the total boat slow is that it takes a lot longer to set. So you have a lot longer working time. So let's go ahead and pour some more in here. And this is probably going to be way too much of a, a pour here. This is going to be over a thousand. Over 1,200 grams of resin all at once. So who knows what's going to happen. And we'll pour them at the same time. And then I'll put it over to the side. You'll notice the hardener is very thin. It's uh, it's watery consistency, and that's why they they. I don't know why they call it fix it, but it is it is pretty awesome, and uh, it's really thin. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna. If you'll notice, I forgot all about this. Did you see that it turns orange? This is the sapphire blue. This is this. I, it's the pH level in this resin. So you got to put a lot of it in there, and it does finally turn blue, but it starts off orange. So it's very strange. And this stuff is opaque, so. All right, so we're going to start mixing this stuff up. And I really wish that I had my mixer i broke my other mixer so we're gonna put as much as we can in here i want this a vibrant orange it looks like a peach right now <clears throat> thanks jp i appreciate that And JP, I'll make you a deal. I'll talk to you about the deal after this, all right? <laughs> Let's keep on putting some more in. See, this is kind of a, a pearlescent orange already. Definitely not a vibrant orange. But no matter what you do or what resin you use, you have to mix it for three minutes. And I'm gonna hold off on that one. I'm gonna start mixing this one. And this one will, believe it or not, it's gonna look orange right now. But as it goes, it'll turn blue. You can see it's darkening up right now. You see that? You see how it's darkening up? I'm just trying not to spill it everywhere. It'll turn a blue color as it, uh, as it hardened or as it goes through. That pH level did it. Uh, seen it on another one of my videos. So, <clears throat> see, it looks orange to me, but it'll turn. I'm gonna put a little bit more blue in there. Get it a little bit darker. Now. I think it's a good idea to swirl these once they go in. We'll go in there and then we'll use like something to to swirl them. But the problem is, is like I said, it won't be a full pour. Hey, Kayton, how you doing, man? All right, somebody asked, uh, how important is dry wood 
in the resin process? Do you test for moisture content? I do test for moisture content. Uh, it's best to have your wood under 11%. Some resins are more forgiving of moisture than other resins. Uh, slow set, I found to be very, it is not turning blue like it should. So I'm going to let that one sit and mix this other one a little bit more. Um, slow set is more forgiving than two to one. And I found, and I'm not bashing Alumilite, but I found that Alumilite is not forgiving of moisture at all. It has to be very dry for Alumilite. And Kevin probably could answer that a little bit better. He uses uh, Alumilite. Uh, I've only used it a few times and had issues, like I've said in the past. I Maybe operator error, but it just, I can never get it to do well. All right. So this is not turning blue, but I will post some other time when it cures up and you will see that it is blue because it'll, it'll change colors as it cures. Okay. Uh, Jack Watson says, think about high school chemistry and litmus paper, red acid and blue or uh, base blue. Uh, this is why uh, it's reddish and orange color. Yeah, and as it cures, it will turn blue. That's the that's the cool thing about it. Okay, so uh, Nicholas says if you use uh, Lumilite, it has to be uh, less than five percent. I don't think I have any that is five percent. I think 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 six percent is the. Uh, I think thick set, or I'm sorry. Uh, I don't have any that is any less than, than 6%. Uh, it's hard to get down there. Plus, once you bring it into your workshop, the moisture content goes back up. So uh, some of my videos, I'll even cast I'll even cast uh, wood that has a higher content of moisture. And if I get a crack, I'll just re recast it. So, And that's just putting a little bit more resin in there. See, uh, I think it's Tom. Tom said that he was done using uh, Lumilite because of the uh, moisture issue, too. I I've heard a lot of people say that, and I'm not saying that Lumilite's not a good resin. Uh, like I said, I don't think I've used it enough to, to, to be able to say if it's good or not. I just can only talk about the issues that I've had. I'm sorry. I'm going to mix this a little bit more. Nicholas says uh, Lumilite works best if you're using uh, stabilized wood. Um, talking about and he talks about baking your 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 wood for a few hours before using. Uh, that is something I do. I take my blanks and I'll put them in the oven and I'll dry out my like right now I've got three brand new blanks. They're wet wood. I put them in the oven. They'll crack. They'll move. They'll do everything. Uh, put them in the oven at 220 degrees and they were in there for four or five hours last night, and I put them on this morning about two hours ago, and they'll bake for four or five more hours. I'll turn them off, and then later on tonight, I'll put them back on. I'll do that for about a, about three or four days, and then it's usually dry enough. But when you do that, your moisture meter will not work on the wood. Uh, it's kind of strange. I guess when you heat the wood up, you change it chemically or something. Hell, I don't know. I'm not a chemist, so... So Kevin says he only has problem with Alumilite when his moisture content's over eight. So, all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and we'll pour this. I've got a little bucket right here that I put all, ah, as I drop them all, as I put all my things in, and then I can reuse those if I need to. I usually go to Lowe's and they hand me a big old handful of these things. Or Home Depot. All right. So let's hopefully this thing didn't get bumped in in leaks. <laughs> I uh, I did a wall hanging. Here, let me go grab it real quick before we pour this. I gotta show you guys this. Uh, 
I started this. I mean, this thing is big. This is a wall hanging piece of art. That's Apple. And, and I was doing a video on this, but as you guys might remember, my hard drive crashed. And I've lost everything on my hard drive and my computer and stuff like that. Um, and I had it in a bit in one of these, but it was uh, it was the HDPE, which if you don't know what HDPE is, it's this plastic stuff right here. I get this from one of our businesses in town for free. Um, and I had it all done up. It was sitting on my uh, on my table saw, and I did a pour. And I let it harden a little bit, and then I did another pour, and I forgot to put hardener in it. And then the mold started leaking, and I was in my house, and it leaked overnight, went all over my entire table saw, all over the floor, everything. So sometimes these things just leak, <laughs> so you got to be careful. It was uh, pretty horrible. Hey, I am glad that uh, Tony said something. I forgot to uh, glue the wood down. And all I'm going to do is use this glue, hot glue gun. A couple of dabs will do you. And then pop it on in just like this. And then let it sit for a second. Yeah, uh, Larry over at the Wood Whirler, th thanks, Annette. Um, he he actually has a video on using a dehydrator to dehydrate the, the moisture out of the wood. And he says it works great. And Annette and them say that they got one and it works pretty good, too. If you guys haven't don't know who Annette and Tom are, they're with Axe Wood Paste. They're one of my sponsors for the channel. Um, head on over to their, their website, Axe Wood Paste. You've seen me use it in the video. It, it's great stuff. Uh, I've got a coupon down below. Oh, well, actually, it's not in here. Uh, I don't even remember what it is right now. I'd have to go look, but I've got a coupon on any of my videos, and you can go over there and get a, a little discount on their stuff. All right, and I, I think they also told me last night that they've got new kits. Uh, small kits, is that right, Ann? Yeah, they've got some small kits. I think they're $18 for the small kit, and I think that includes shipping. So that's a little bit more affordable for everybody. And uh, I'll tell you what, I think I think one of the things of Axe Pace lasts me six months or, or more. Uh, so they, they're really good. A vacuum chamber to suck out the water. That's That's weird. <laughs> I I remember that too, Kate. I remember uh, 500 subscribers. I remember my first subscriber. Uh, he's not he's not on YouTube anymore. He had a little channel himself, a young man, and he was my first subscriber, and it was pretty pretty cool. So, uh, I'll tell you what. I thank thank each and every one of my subscribers every day. Uh, without you guys here, I wouldn't be able to to do the stuff I do and. It, it, I, I just can't say thank you enough. So thank you. All right, here we go. We're going to pour this now that this is set down. Let me unplug. I'll forget. Anybody else plug these things in and then forget about them? I'll come out here two days later and it's like hot and I smell it. And <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, it still hasn't changed color. It usually changed color before this. So, um, I think maybe it's not going to change colors, but I don't know. It's weird. It's just strange and weird to me. Um, Hodgepod Woodwork, congratulations. He, he just reached. Go over and check him out, too. He's got some pretty cool stuff. Um, the thing about being able to do stuff like this when you're not using a uh, when you're not using a pressure pot, it's kind of cool to be able to do stuff like this 
because in a pressure pot, it starts bubbling up and it mixes everything. And, and it's hard to get. Thanks, JP. I appreciate it. We we're just talking about the festival at the beginning of this. Um, so when you're using a pressure pot, it starts bubbling. The air starts bubbling up. And and what it does is it mixes the resin. And hold on. I got one. This is a future project, which I got to figure out what to do with it. It starts bubbling up. And I put white pearlescent resin on one side of this over here. Hold on. Let me get some of this dust off of here. It's been sitting there for a little bit. I put white pearlescent resin on one side, and then I put red pearlescent on the other side. But you'll see the pearl went kind of pinkish. And the red, although it said red right here, is kind of pinkish all the way up to the right there and there. So it swirls it up. But I think this will be good. This is what I got I got to fix right here. You'll see it went in and... and not all the big holes down in there. So, and that's caused free because I had too tight of a seal on the piece. I should have drizzled it in there or put this in afterwards. And, you know, that's the way that goes. So, all right. So what do we do now? We, well, first of all, we get this little black thing out of here. All right, so what are we going to do now? I take this and I put it over to the side. I cover it and I leave it. And this is thick set. The one issue about thick set is that it takes three days to cure. That, that is a long time, yes. But it's going to be well worth it. So uh, I still have to put, I'll probably put a, I'll probably just plane it down from here because I didn't need it that thick if I'm going to make it a charcuterie board or, or a cutting board of some, si some size. So, yeah, uh, Bill, I saw that. Uh, it's a pretty cool. He was talking about Ben Works. Um, he put his GoPro inside the pressure pot, and it shows the resin as it cures and the bubbles coming up and stuff. So we're going to put this off to the side. And we're going to go ahead and cast one more piece. All right. And, and it's going to be this one right here. And I'll show you that in a second. Let me move this over there. If you got any questions, go ahead and put them in there. If I haven't, if you asked a question, I missed it, put it in again. I think I'm a glutton for punishment. I just put it on my uh, table saw. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, let me get these over to the side. And I'm going to put these in my dump bucket over here. Well, one of them for now. Uh, why is this thing not doing right? Um, there gosh, uh, he's asking how much do I spend on the equipment on my shop? Um, my, my, my business does nothing but puts money back into my business over the past <clears throat> eight years or well, seven, seven years. Uh, because before I actually decided to, to name my business, I had a business I was doing woodworking prior to that. Uh, didn't really do very many bowls, did some bowls, did a lot of jewelry boxes, cutting boards, stuff like that. Um, and as I as I grew my business, uh, I buy stuff because for tax purposes, and I, I don't want to get into everything, but for tax purposes, uh, the first five years, you're okay to show a loss. And that even if you're making money, you're putting it back into your business and you're showing a loss then you get to take that money as a, as a, it's, it's kind of like a, a loophole. Uh, I don't have a personal, an LLC or anything like that. So I use it for my, for my uh, personal, on my personal taxes and schedule C. So I know that kind of diverts from the question 
Uh, and it's hard to say because I've used, I buy uh, used equipment or, or I'll save up and I'll buy a new piece of equipment if I can. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would say with everything, just the big equipment, it, it's probably over $10,000. Um, but I mean, you got to realize that's over, over a, uh, seven, six, seven, eight year period. And I've had other equipment that I've sold and then bought new equipment. So, Hey Lynn. Well, thank you. I appreciate uh, that. You like my channel. Thank you. <laughs> JP at least a grand but uh I, I will say this about equipment you don't have to have super great equipment to do woodworking that, that I don't anybody that tells you that you have to have a a five thousand uh, dollar table saw or a three thousand dollar lathe is just ridiculous I started off on a harbor freight lathe and if you if you've seen anything about my channel, you understand that I don't like Harbor Freight. Um, then when I had issues with my Harbor Freight, I went over to a Grizzly. I had a Grizzly lathe. If you go back to my old videos, I had one of those for five years. The uh, 0462 or something like that. It's a fantastic 12 inch lathe. But I got to start getting a lot of requests for larger or larger bowls and I only had a 12 inch uh, capacity so I saved up and I got a pretty pretty great deal at Woodcraft they they hooked me up pretty good and I got the 18 inch Laguna and I absolutely love it absolutely love it but I had a lunchbox one of those lunchbox planers for a long time and uh, one of the uh, DeWalt ones like a lot of people have on YouTube and then I got a chance to buy this Powermatic that I have. And the guy gave it to me for a steal. I mean, it's a $3,500 uh, planer and I got it for, for $1,000. And I sold my other planer for $200. So, you know, go figure. And it takes a little while to pay that off. So anyways, okay, I digress. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why, but I keep on having to refresh down my uh, all my comments. Yeah, I mean it, it's exactly exactly right, guys. It, it, the equipment doesn't make a great project, and and you can go through YouTube everywhere and see that because people are making some amazing stuff with their hands, with a, a Harbor Freight grinder, a Harbor Freight lathe. So uh, just realize you don't have to have that. You don't have to have such uh, expensive equipment. And, and my my equipment may look expensive, but it's definitely not. I do not pay full price for anything. I am one of the most frugal people you will know. Uh, my wife likes to call me cheap, but that's okay. All right, so let's do this. So what we're going to do, um, this is a piece of cherry right here. This thing has some pretty nice spalting up on here. Uh, I've debarked it, and it's got this fungus stuff on here. But we're going to leave that, okay? Um, and what I do, I've got a circle jig. I cut it out, and then I plane this down on my uh, my old joiner. Yeah, I've got a super old joiner, so uh, I would love to have a new one. But like I said, you know, money, money doesn't come. You have to save up to buy. I believe in buying cash for everything. So let's see if we can get, get this going. And this may not stick. And Nicholas says he's using uh, the Harbor or the HB lathe. What is that? Is that a Harbor Freight lathe or the HB? Okay, probably the Harbor Freight lathe. Okay, um, and and he's looking to upgrade. I mean, it's it's fantastic when you get to upgrade. Don't get me wrong, but don't do it unless you absolutely need to. If you're happy with your 12 inch lathe and it works good, I'd stick with it and use my money on resin. <laughs> I 
All right, so that's done down there. And we are not going to use the slow on this one. We are going to use the two to one. And you'll notice this machine right here. Um, you'll be able to see more about this machine on Monday. I'll be releasing a video about it. Um, it's pretty awesome. I got it as a wedding present from Total Boat. They are they are a fantastic group of people over there. So uh, they they help me do this channel also. They're one of my sponsors along with uh, Axwood Paste and Starbon. Uh, like I said before, and I'll get the stuff and I'll put it down below. But uh, I've got a whole bunch of coupons that you guys are able to use to get a discount on this stuff. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to use this. And there's no need to measure out if I've got this. So let's get rid of that. All right, I'm excited. So this thing just pumps. And I got it in an awkward place. So. And it automatically... All right, I, I hope I'm back. Okay, sorry, I hit, I hit the uh, the internet cable right there. So I hope I'm back. All right, let's. Uh... All right, so let's uh, keep going with this. I'm gonna try not to hit that cable there. Like I said, it's in an awkward place. All right, so. I'm going to end up having to do two, two pours on this. I'm fairly certain on that, um, but it's not a big deal. So we've got this. Let's see where some black at. Copy. That's over here. Let's see if I got black, carbon black over here. Battleship gray, mahogany. I know I've got some... Silver, carbon black. Okay, we're going to use some carbon black on this one. And I'm hopefully that copper will, uh, will check out or be able to see it. All right. Well, I should be back, right, Kevin? I hope so. All right, we're going to... Hmm. All right. Let me go over here. So this is a uh, Jacquard Pearl X. And I like this cause it's like a pearl and I like to put a little bit of silver in it sometimes, but I think with the copper will be all right. So, so this stuff is supposed to be mixing exactly right. And I, I'll tell you what, I haven't, done but a couple of castings and that's with with these uh these things right here so and this is a lot thicker but you still got to do it for three minutes so what i end up doing is i end up going to my clock i go to my timer which is already set up for three minutes and then i do that and then that's what I mix. So, but I can answer any questions while we're doing this. Hopefully, uh, hey Steve, good to see you. Um, and just so you guys know, my, my coupon, you know, you talk about this dispenser, my coupon does work for it, and it'll give you uh, about fifty-eight dollars off. So, if, if you're interested in that, and 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 contrary to popular belief, I don't make any money off of all this, guys. I negotiate with uh, with these companies. I talk to these companies, and I'm not making money off it. I just I just believe in these companies because they're they're such great companies. They support the woodworking uh, uh, playing field, and they they just are good quality stuff, you know. And I probably won't do this for exactly three minutes. Probably two minutes. Um, but what we're going to do right now in the middle of this is we're going to start taking some of this and putting it in here so it'll tear up as we do this. I'm just 
going to put it down in there. Ah, it got on there before I could push it in there. And you probably won't be able to see too much of this right now. And once once I'm done casting this, I will do a video after it to to show you the actual result. I think this is going to be all I'm going to do in here. These last couple, I got so many of them in here. One more here. All right, so this is how messy it gets around here. All right, so this, you can see in here, I hope, it's in there, and it's going to, hopefully it doesn't just float 30 more seconds on the clock, but I stopped mixing for a little bit. Try to get all this off of here and into the, fear is that I'm doing this I'm gonna have to do a whole nother pour because this will end up going down below and in around the sides so I try to get the the, the blank as close to the sides as I can that is a uh, copper it is copper Lynn I'm not really sure where I got this either I think I either got it off of Etsy or off of Amazon. All right. So, and this is simple. All you do is you, well, oh, hold on. See, I almost messed up again. I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, hold on one second. Nope, that won't work. So, all right. I'll have to babble for just a few minutes while this warms up. I got to, I glued this to this and that helps save resin. Because if you have to fill all the way up to the top here with resin, that's a bunch more resin. So, oh. so I hope you guys are going to tune in tonight for the virtual fair. It's going on all day. I think it's actually going on right now, too. Hey, uh, Nicholas, I get... Uh, Depending on which ones you're talking about. Hold on. Okay, I've got, uh, I get all my stickers from Sticker Mule. And uh, I have this, these stickers right here. And then I have, I just actually got a whole bunch more of these. I just ordered them. Uh, these holographic moon pie stickers. Uh, I get them from uh, Sticker Mule. They always have, I don't just go buy them because like I said, I'm frugal. I wait until they, they do 50 of them for $20. Or they actually have the, uh, you'll get 10 for $1 all the time. Uh, so I, I'll order them whenever I get that kind of, uh, that kind of. Uh, <laughs> uh, the the Total Boat Dispenser, what's the price on them? By the way, if you got, if anybody here wants uh, a sticker or one of each, and I actually, I think I might have some magnets left. Uh, all you got to do is contact me via, Facebook Messenger or email at moonpiecreations2014 at gmail.com and I'll send it off. So no need to send me a self-addressed stamped envelope or nothing. Hold on a second. I'll tell you how much it is. Go to the shop. Resin stuff. It's on the last page. And it is, well, they have two different kinds. You can get the maker one, 
the Maker Epoxy one, and then also the High Performance two-in-one like I have, which is a little bit cheaper. It's $289, but with my 15% off, that's about $58 off. So uh, using Moon Pie uh, one five. I know, I know it's not cheap, and and I I'm so grateful that they they sent it to me. So, all right, let's see if this is warm enough that I can. Now, you may look at it and say, well, that's not even. It's not even at all, but that doesn't matter because when I put this on the lathe before I do, I'll sand this down flat with my sanding disc. So, all right. Hopefully, this thing won't float, but even if it does, I've got, I've got, uh, if I can get to it. I've got these weights that I put on there to hold them down from my Nautilus equipment that I used to have. And here we go. And this this resin kind of when it when it cures it'll go down a little bit it won't be as high here so I may have to do another one in there you know some of the resin may go down and go underneath the bowl so you never never can tell so uh, if so I may do another casting I may not I may just leave it the way it is but you'll you may have noticed that I did seal with uh, total boat two to one i did seal this piece of wood it's pine and it's very porous and it sucks up everything so <laughs> yes i still use the weights all right so now i gotta find my little other piece here I got stuff stuck everywhere. So, all right. Uh, here's my my pot. This is a Harbor Freight paint pot, which has been converted over to. And hold on, so let me. There we go. All right, and it's been converted over to a pressure pot. Super, super easy build. Zach Higgins has a, has a video. I'm not sure. Kevin, I think, do you have a video? But they're all over the internet. And I found that all you need are two pieces to convert this over. And that is this piece here, which is a, uh, a little fitting that reduces maybe it's three maybe it's three pieces reduces it this little pin right here but you can take this off of the other part of the pot because they still have it on there and this piece right here are the only pieces that you need to convert this over so and then i made this little brown piece of hdpe to put down on the bottom just to flatten out because it does have a curved bottom on it a lot of people get these pots and they complain that they leak. Well, what I do is I take this seal right here. I take it out and I take Vaseline and I douse it in Vaseline. And I put it back in there and it, and it like, I don't know. It just, it, it absorbs the Vaseline and gets puffier and softer and you can do it right, right, right onto the pot. And you don't have any issues. All right. So we take this, put this in here. Make sure it's setting right. And then take the weights. Although I, nah, I'm not going to use that HTP. As a matter of fact, I am I'm getting resin all over this. Hold on. 
I get a build up of resin on this and I have to end up chipping it off. All right, so put the top on. Hey, cookies. All right, so. All right, so I keep it closed and on the bottom part of this, this pot is a little tiny, little tiny piece that looks just like this. I don't know if you can see that. I need to get it into focus. All right, but it, it's on there and what it does is the air goes through and it disperses it out sideways. I don't have it on my big pot. When I did the popcorn one, I put the air in and it went straight down and it blew all the popcorn and resin out. <laughs> so very important to have that on the underside. So I put it at uh, right about 60 PSI. This thing is rated for 60 PSI. And then it comes down a little bit to about 55. And it is good to go. And then I'll uh, e very easily take it and put it under, uh, under there. All right, so <clears throat> that's it. That's, uh, that's the casting of those two items. So let me tell you what I'm gonna do with that platter. If the platter comes out, I'm gonna choose one of the people that was in the live stream and I'm gonna give it to you, okay? Um, if you're a turner, I'd be happy not to turn it and just give it to you. So I will ask the question uh, when I decide who gets it. So, <laughs> so, and I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, we'll wait to see if it turns out. Uh, but I really, really appreciate you guys stopping by. Remember, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tonight, I'm going to be over here on my lathe turning something which i haven't decided what i think hold on i can turn one of these two uh things right here um this one is a red and black bowl and i think it's got uh cherry inside of it and this is a burl and uh, pearl resin. I can make a jewelry box out of that. So I haven't decided yet. Um, <laughs> why did that do that? That's weird. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. So like I said, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I will decide on one of these. Um, to, to, man, how did I head? Okay, there we go. You got famous for a minute there, hodgepodge. <laughs> for what it's worth, if you pressurize your pot slowly, it will maintain a higher pressure. Yes, it will. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate you letting people know that. Um, 50 PSI is all you need to uh, on your pressure pot. Like I said, I, I bring it up to 60 and then it comes back down. Uh, if you go slowly, you can bring it on up to where you need it and just leave it there and it will, it'll go, it'll stay there. So, all right, guys, I got to get going. Got some stuff I got to do. I got to prepare for tonight. Um, like I said, I'm most likely going to give away this platter. Uh, so stay tuned. I will post it on my uh, on my YouTube channel in a post. It will not go in a video. It'll go in a post on the person who won it. And then you will need to go ahead and comment back and then contact me so I know where to send it. But until I see you tonight at 7 p.m. Standard Eastern or Eastern Standard Time, stay cool.